one of the tools you will very frequently use in consulting and in many other professional roles as well is Excel. Though from my experience, having worked in consulting at McKinsey for six years and having worked with lots of clients from lots of corporations, many people really struggle to work properly in Excel and especially to format their worksheets in a proper way. So this is what we're going to discuss today. I will show you how you can format your sheets in a way that they look professional. I'll show you a couple of tips and tricks that I picked over time, how you can quickly in a nice way make sure that your sheets look proper and nice and good. So welcome to another coffee break here on my channel Firm Learning. My name is Heinrich and on my channel I want to help you to become successful in the first years of your career. So today we're going to tackle this topic in the following way. First I will share a couple of general remarks and observations why it is indeed important to format your sheets in a decent way and then I will show you here on my screen on the PC some practical tips what you can actually do to format your sheets in a pragmatic way. So let's start. Why is it even necessary to format your sheets? Well first it just helps to bring the key messages across. An ill-formatted sheet will be much more difficult for yourself or for your clients to orientate yourself in the data. It is just less accessible, less intuitive to look at. But the second reason is that it just helps with the look and feel, with the end product quality of the sheets that you produce. And indeed in professional services every single document, every single sheet that you send out to a client will just be expected to meet a higher level of quality than maybe what would be okay internally in the client organization that you work for. Many clients walk around with the expectation that what you deliver as a BCG consultant, as a Bain consultant is just on a higher level, just meets quality standards which are higher than the standards that they hold themselves accountable for. And indeed many consulting firms have internalized that so most project leads, most partners will hold you accountable that you indeed deliver results to the size levels. So that being said, let me share a couple of practical things what you can do to just improve the formatting, improve the look and feel of your sheets. So let's just look at this random file. Let's assume now we want to work with it, format it in a proper way to make it client ready. And indeed, if you look at this, it looks quite messy. It for sure is not the way how it should be if you send something like this to a client. And let's just look at what we see here. So this apparently is merchandise from different seasons. So for instance, from an apparel company with a season code, a supplier code, and then the quantity and the purchase price that is available here. So let's get started. And the first thing that I notice is here that the title of this file, copy of book one, this is not great, right? You should never send a file with such a title. So let's look into it and indeed save it in a proper way. So usually you go with something like this. So the date, so it start with the year, then the month, then the day, and maybe then something like merchandise overview 2021 version one, if we just start doing this. So this could be one way and then also notice here this one book. So this is also always usually something that you would like to name in a proper way. So for instance, something like merchandise overview to make it consistent. So that's a start. Let's continue by uh, looking into this. So here you see a mess of different font sizes, different font types and so on and so forth. So again, this doesn't look the way it should. So let's all standardize this, make it the same font size, make it the same font type. So at least this is not all in the same style. Then one little thing that I also like to do is always to insert a little column here to the left and then above. And then we make this a little bit smaller. Just create a little bit of distance. This just in my experience gives it a nice and clean look here. I don't think we need this underline. And then here also look at this title. This is like a long messy title. So again, one thing that I often like to do is to have a main title and then a subtitle. So let's potentially call this something like merchandise overview as the main title. And then we can call it as a subtitle just to save this season 2020 and 2021 report power BI. And then we can delete this. This might potentially be bolded. Now let's make sure that here all the columns are of proper size to space it out, something like this. Next one to do the borders. So here what I like to do is always to give the borders here uh, to the main data, but not necessarily to the rest. So we do something like this and now to make it a bit look better, here you go on view and then you take away the grid lines. My experience really is if you take away the grid lines, it all looks a bit cleaner. 
Now here you go for a dark color, something like this dark blue, and then here the white, and then you could potentially also bold this. Now I would also like to here reduce the distance a little bit. Now next thing we can do is really to freeze the paints because now currently if I'm scrolling, I'm not seeing the headers anymore. So you click here, view, freeze paints, freeze paints. But this, this thing here above is fixed. This also makes it look quite nice, much better. So let's make sure that all these number formats are clean as well. So you see that this is in some weird way that this is centered, even though this should be aligned to the right. So let's just use here the format painter to make sure that this is all set up in a proper way. Now you can see that this is an ID, so I would be fine with that. I would now continue to format this, though the quantity here, it would always be good to have some uh, separators, right, for all the thousand. So let's do that. Now we can see that this is done and here for the purchase price, for sure, this is something we would like to do as well. So here, now let's assume we know that this is Euro, then it definitely would be nice to also include this in such an accounting format with the Euro sign. So if we now open the old one and now compare it to the new one, I hope that you agree that now the new one looks nicer and cleaner to what you had before. And indeed, this really is quick, right? Now, even with explaining it, it just it took me a couple of minutes. And usually, of course, it's even faster if you just do it on your own. Now, just in addition to that, let's imagine you have a bit of a more complex layout with maybe different types of tables next to each other, and you'd like to do that as well. But here are two tips. So my general recommendation would be that if you now start building different tables, rather build them one under the other instead of now adding them here to the right. This is just the standard way of modeling, especially if you have more complex tables with maybe times here in the columns, then it's always nicer, cleaner to do it from top to bottom, then from left to right, because then you potentially, for instance, could also use the same date fields then throughout the table for different lines. Again, there might be some exceptions to that, especially if you make dashboards, for instance, then it might make sense to do it in a different way. And here indeed, if you would like to learn more about that, I once made a distinct video with a couple of tips on how you can build quite powerful and easy dashboards in Excel. So I will link it somewhere above here if you would like to learn more about that. But now back to this, because indeed, if here you would have different types of tables, one after the other. So how would you do that, right? And let's imagine we might have even more. So here I would probably do it is I do it exactly like this, right? So I just here then copy the, the title. Of course, this might also be now a different title. And then I would leave like one lane distance and then probably also make this distance a little bit shorter. And by that now you could build all kinds of stuff one after or one below the other and then keep such a nice clean look for all of this to keep going. Now let me end with an additional little formatting convention. And this is especially important if you're now working with more complex files, more complex models. Because indeed, usually it's important to also with colors distinguish the input cells from the output or the calculated cells. So let's imagine now we would like to calculate the price per unit. Just here to make a basic example. So now probably what we would like to do is just to format this over here just to have it in the same way. Now we would calculate that by dividing the total purchase price by the units. So just like this. Okay, and now what we would love to do is as you can see that this is now a calculated field and now not really an input field, right? Where we just input the raw data. And here one convention is to color calculated fields in a dark blue, something like this, for instance. So here now on first sight, you see that the black cells are cells that you hard copy, that you hard input, and then the blue cells are calculated ones. So again, this just really helps if you have a more complex, larger model to really understand what are now the inputs, what are the cells that you hard coded, hard typed into it, and what are now the output cells, which probably you should not directly manipulate, but rather their value is derived from the value of some other sets. And again, if you'd like to learn more, I have more videos like this on Excel for people working in professional services. I will link a playlist somewhere above here where you find all the videos that I currently have on my channel. And if you would like to see more content like this, subscribe because on my channel, I will create more videos on Excel in the future as well.
Though now I would love to hear from you. Do you have any little tips and tricks that you'd like to share to other people here in the firm learning community? Let me know your tips in the comment section. And as you know, I will do my very best to answer every single comment that you write. If you took away any value at all out of this video, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all my content. If you want to see even more from me, follow me on my Instagram and recently also started to become more active on Twitch and on TikTok. So you find links to both of these platforms below in the video description. So check this out. Now I also want to give a shout out to all the members of Firm Learning. Thank you so much for supporting me for your contribution for this channel. This is really making a difference. And if you want to become a member as well and benefit from some member only perks, hit the join button next to the subscribe button to learn more about this. This is Heinrich from Firm Learning. I'm releasing weekly videos every single Saturday here on my channel. So looking forward to see you again next Saturday. Until then, good weekend to all of you. This is Heinrich. Bye bye.